glad to help you with that. Oh, no, thank you. I can manage. Do, ma'am. Hello. I'm Linda Roberts. Oh, yes, Miss Roberts. I got your telegram. I have a nice room for you, second floor front. Well, that'll be just fine. Would you register, please? Yes. I don't have time to take my bag upstairs. Would you watch it for me? Well, surely. And where is the courthouse? One block down the street. That's where they're holding the inquest? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the inquest. Thank you. Yes, am I. It's all been said, Ben. In there. What legal things have been said, but they're... I'm not interested. You killed my boy. No matter what a coroner's jury said, it was murder, not self-defense. He should have been held for trial and convicted. If your name weren't Cartwright, you would have been. Amos, I... I wanted to see you dead, Joe. to turn in, isn't it? It's getting kind of late. I don't feel much like sleeping yet, Bob. Keep from thinking about Mr. Crenshaw. The way he looked at me today, he thinks he's sad. You must know I didn't want to shoot Zach. I did everything I could to stop it if he just hadn't drawn the gun on me. Everybody knows that, Joe. All the witnesses testified to it. Everybody knows it. Everybody except Zach's father. Inside, he knows it. He just can't get himself to believe it. Awful hard for a father to admit to himself that his his son tried to kill a man. Maybe if I if I went over and I talk and I talked to him and tried to exp explain it, <laughs> Joe, 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 listen. There's, there's nothing you can explain. You've said everything there is to say. What Amos needs now is time. Time to think. Time to let the wound heal. Time to face the truth. To be honest with himself. Yeah, I... I guess, I guess you're right. And what you need, young man, is some sleep. I want you and us to go into town real early tomorrow and get some new men for that ditch digging, so off to bed. All right. And Joe, you did everything you could. There was nothing else you could do. Absolutely nothing. Okay, 
It's a man for a ditching job. Joe Cartwright. Real live celebrity right here in Virginia City. All right, what's the joke? Little Joe, we're going to have to start looking at you in a new light. Had no idea you were such a valuable critter. What's it all about? Well, according to this, you're worth as much dead as Jesse James. Lady wants you dead. You must have done something awful bad. Promised to marry her, maybe. And then backed out. Well, I hate to disappoint you, boys, but I'm as much in the dark about this as you are. You mind if I keep this? Go right ahead. There's plenty more of them. The little lady has them tacked up all over town. We'll be back for those beers later. Anybody do a thing like that? I don't know, but I'm gonna find out. Not without me, Yank. Room 26, Joe. Miss Roberts is expecting you. She told me to send you right up. Thanks. Brothers, come in. You, uh, you, Miss Linda Roberts? I am, Mr. Cartwright. As far as I know, we've never met before. I saw her yesterday out in front of the courthouse. And I saw both of you there for the first time. So you've seen me just once. This isn't a very funny joke. I can assure you that poster is no joke. Let me get this straight. You don't even know my little brother, and yet you'll pay just any yahoo with a gun a thousand dollars to kill him? That's exactly right. Now you've learned what you came to learn. Now you can both leave. Not just yet, Miss Roberts. I want to know why you want me killed. You should know, and if you don't, you can wonder about that for as long as you live. You put a thousand dollars on my head, and you won't even tell me why. You must be out of your mind. Not at all. I'm sure you know why. I give you my word, I haven't the slightest idea. Doesn't the name Roberts mean anything to you? Billy Roberts? He was my brother and you killed him. In Carson City, June 16th at 11 o'clock at night in an alley behind the Nevada house. He didn't have a chance. His gun was still in his holster when the sheriff found him. And don't tell me you weren't there because I know differently. I'm not denying I was there. I was staying at the Nevada house. Was questioned along with 15 or 20 other men. But you were the only one who fit the description the eyewitness gave. The witness saw me at the investigation and said I wasn't the man. He said he didn't think you were. It was dark in the alley and you could hardly see. What a coincidence. You were questioned about the death of my brother and released. A month later, you were questioned and released about the killing of Zach Crenshaw. It's quite a habit with you, isn't it, Mr. Cartwright? Killing people and getting away with it. Zach Crenshaw pulled a gun on me. I had no choice. There were a dozen witnesses. A dozen witnesses bought and paid for with Cartwright money. Now get out of here. Both of you, get out. Come on, Joe. She sure has her mind made up, don't you? Yeah, she sure does. Well, don't worry about it. Nobody's gonna take that poster seriously anyhow. You sure of that, huh? No, I don't know. 
whole thing's silly, Joe. A thousand dollar reward on that poster. People act pretty silly for a thousand dollars. See if we can hire the men for that ditching job. Coming down the street, if you hear any minute. Bartender? Put this on the back bar. Look, I don't want any trouble in her, mister. Then do as I say. Take those two beers now, Brown. He uh, made me put it up, Hoss. They went tearing out of here to see the lady. They came back. Mean or not, a pair of rattlesnakes. Yeah, it begins to look like the lady's got a case. That poster must mean what it says. Well, if she's willing to pay a thousand dollars, he must have hurt her bad enough to deserve killing. How about that, Joe? What did you do to the little lady? <laughs> he ain't talking, Jim. He's too ashamed to tell us. I figure that's proof enough. It's time somebody did something about you, Cartwright. And I'm just a man for the job. Doing this for Miss Roberts or for the money? Both. Not often a man can get a chance to do a lady a good turn and get paid besides. Well, I hate to disappoint you, but it takes two to make a gunfight. I'm not interested. Only when you can draw on a boy who hasn't got a chance. Come on, Joe, let's go. You draw or crawl, or every time you leave the Ponderosa, I'm going to give you a beating until you're mad enough to face me. Shot in rock salt. The first man who makes a fight move, he'd stand up for a month now. What's going on here? Philly was trying to collect a thousand dollar reward. Are you serious? That's what the man said. I was just on my way to see you. About that woman putting them posters up all over town. I didn't figure she'd get any takers so soon. Get his gun. His too. All right, let's go. Give those two 24 hours in the cell and 20 minutes to leave town. Shouldn't have any more trouble with them. And I'll go over to the hotel and have a talk with Miss Roberts. I'll go with you. Joe. Look, maybe we ought to get on back to Ponderosa. Paul's going to be worried about us anyhow. We haven't hired the men for the ditching crew yet. I'll take care of that, Joe. You going home. Hey, what do you want me to do then? Hide under the bed? Ah, oh, Joe, just hold on. Hoss is right. There might be a couple other drifters around town like those two I just locked up. No use looking for trouble. Give me a little time. I'll get this thing straightened out. Look, Joe, you do what Clem says. I'll hire the men. I'll take care of everything here. You go. Hoss, make sure he stays out of town till this thing simmers down. I'll let your pa know when. Thank you, Clem. I'd like to put some money in the safe, please. Certainly, Miss Rowers. Linda Roberts? Yes. What can I do for you, Sheriff? Well, I, uh, been finding these all over town. Did you tack them up? Yes, I did. Why? I don't think that concerns you, Sheriff. Well, I do. 
These posters incite to murder, ma'am. That's uh, against law. Incite to murder? You're quite wrong. That poster specifies a fair fight. A fair fight in self-defense. That's what a coroner's jury said yesterday. Now, uh, wait a minute. Self-defense is no crime, and the only thing you can charge me with is inciting someone to protect his own life. I'm afraid it goes a lot deeper than that, but I'm not going to stand here and argue the law with you, ma'am. We got us a prosecutor, and town's paid to do that. It's been nice, Sheriff. My key, please. Or you won't be needing your key. You're going with me. I'll lock you up. On what charge? Suspicion of inciting to murder. And just how long do you think you can hold me? Long enough to make you see a few facts and realize you're making a big mistake. After you. Joseph, Hoss and I have been talking. We agree with Clem. You better stay away from Virginia City for the next few days. Oh, but Pa, the No whole... buts. No buts. There's plenty for you to do here. You can take charge of the ditching job. And that'll keep you busy enough so you won't have time to think about other things. Well, he hired the new men. Why can't he handle it? Because I want you to do it. All right. Listen, Hop has been clinging those pots and pans around them back there for an hour. We better get back and eat or we're going to lose a good cook. What'd you say, Hop? I said... Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Hop's, eh? <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. Glenn, come on in. Hello, Joe. Ben. Hoss. Hop Singh. How'd you make out with the girl? Well, I put her in a cell, made her read a complete report of the inquest. What'd she say after she read that? She said it didn't change a thing. As far as she's concerned, all the witnesses were bought off. Only thing it does is reconfirm that you're fast with a gun. Well, she gets an idea in her head, she sticks with it, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. Woman's as stubborn as a mule and twice as dangerous. Clem, is she still in jail? Yep. They can't post bail until the court and the prosecutor fix the amount. Now, if, uh, if we drop the charges, you have to let her out, right? Oh, well, that's right, but I... Joseph, do you think we ought to drop charges? Well, might as well. It doesn't do any good keeping her in a cell. What about the posters? Well, I took them all down, but the harm's already been done, Ben. I can't figure it out. She wants me dead. Why doesn't she do it herself? Yeah, she thinks this fair play business will get the job done keep her out of trouble to boot. Besides, I don't believe she could even fire a gun. Till a month ago, she was teaching English, deportment, and manners in a finishing school for young ladies back east. Manners. Remind me never to go back east. Supper ready, long time. Either Mr. Clem join for supper or leave house so family can eat. Clem, how Well, I'd like to, Ben, thanks him. I'd sure like to, Hop Singh, but uh, I'd better be getting on my way. Oh, I sent a wire to the sheriff of Carson City explaining the problem here. He promised to wire back if anything new turns up concerning the death of Miss Roberts' brother. Thank you, Clem. Well, good night, boys. Good night, Clem. Thanks again. Joseph? Let's eat. It's about time. You can thank Joe Cartwright for your release. He wanted the charges dropped. I wouldn't have been so generous. I'm sure Mr. Cartwright's a very generous man. He can afford it. But you can tell him for me he isn't fooling anyone. He can't hide his guilt behind a display of generosity. Good night, Sheriff. killer dead, don't you? Yes, I do. 
hire me, and Joe Cartwright dies. All right. I have to open my purse. Do it. But don't turn around. Check the map up on the east section. I'll take care of the west. Supposed to be working on the ditch up on the west section? Yeah, we was just taking a little rest, that's all. When my brother hired you, didn't he tell you there was no drinking on the job? Yeah, that's right. That's what he told us. Good, I just want to make sure. I hate to fire anybody by mistake. You got a day's pay coming, pick it up at the house. You gotta have more respect for your elders, boy. I don't see any difference between a lazy old man and a lazy young one. Don't move, boy. You know, you cut me to the quick, call me and my friend here lazy. Of course, the truth of the matter is, we are. That's why we took the job. Seemed like an easy way to make a fast thousand dollars. Since we heard you weren't coming to the town, we figured the least we could do was come to see you. A lot of people know I'm out here. They know you're working here, too. You're not going to get away with it. But we ain't going to hide it, boy. You're gonna die in a fair fight. Luke's gonna shoot you, and they're gonna find you with your gun in your hand right where I put it. <laughs> then I'll tell the law how you started the fight, and Luke just had to shoot. You know, I'm a good witness. All right, throw it over here, nice and easy. You two had better ride out. Don't stop for a long time. Won't be very healthy for you around Virginia City. Come on, move. Lucky thing I came along. If you hadn't, I'd have been dead now. I was on my way over to the Ponderosa. I just wanted to tell you that I know you didn't want to kill my Zack. I guess I knew it all along. I just couldn't bring myself to admit it. Well, I said it. I better get back to my place. Hey, Mr. Crenshaw. I... Look, why don't you come on over to our place? Maybe have supper right now. I know Pa would like to see you. No, thanks, so. I, I don't think so today. Started digging a new well on my place. Just to keep busy. Besides, a man has to get used to being alone. You say hello to your father for me. Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye, sir. Quite serious, Joe. I don't want you near any of the new men until Clem has things settled down in town. I'll take care of things around here for a few days, Joe. Thanks. You know, I think you started this whole thing just so I'd have to do your work for you. Uh, pa, if you don't need me for the next few days, I'd, uh, I'd like to go to Mr. Crenshaw's place and give him a hand digging that well. 
Well, it's fine with me. If you don't think Amos wouldn't rather be alone. No. Now, if you'd have seen him today and talked to him the way I did, I think you'd agree with me. I think that's the last thing he wants, is to be left alone. Oh, fine. Good. Tell Amos that if he needs anything, if we can help him in any way... We... He knows that already. Good enough. I think I'm gonna turn in. I'm gonna get an early start. Good night. Good night, Joe. Good night, John. You know, Paul, things have been kind of rough for Mr. Crenshaw. I have an idea that Joe's being over there might make him feel a little better. Yes, I, I hope so. I know that being there will make Joe feel better. I'm going to start work on the new well tomorrow, Zach. I saw Joe Cartwright today. I told him I was sorry about the way I've been acting. <laughs> I told him I was trying to get used to being alone. I could see he looked bad. He'll be coming around for a visit soon. Real soon. Hello, Joe. What are you doing out this way? Well, I uh, got pretty well caught up in my chores at home. I thought I might come out and give you a hand digging that well. Oh, that's mighty kind of you to take pity on an old man. I can make out all right. Yeah, well, look, it's, it's got nothing to do with pity. It's really kind of selfish on my part. You know, that trouble we had out at the ranch the other day, I thought it'd be best if I didn't go near strangers for a while. You sure that's the reason? Yeah, I'm sure. In that case, grab a shovel. It's no fun working alone. You take a little rest. Let me get in there. I'd be glad to. I heard there was a little trouble in town. What's it all about? A girl named Linda Roberts. Got an idea I killed her brother because of... Because of what happened to Zach? You can say it, Joe. I learned to say it, to accept it. It doesn't do any good to pretend it didn't happen. It's no good for either one of us. I, uh, I guess you're right. I know I'm right. Now let's get in here and work together. I have a feeling we've got to go a long way down before we get what we're after. A long way. What you were telling me the other night was right. You give man a little time to think. It made me feel better, too. I I knew it wasn't my fault about Darren, Zach, but still. You don't have to explain to me. I know how you feel. You feeling hungry? You bet I am. So I was ready to get washed up. Okay. Good today, Zach. It won't be long. It won't be long, I promise you. Well, ain't deep enough yet. But it will be. It will be. Hey, 
Here she comes. Just came from the sheriff, Albert Carson. Figured you'd want it right away. Thanks, Pat. Kind of a surprise, ain't it? Yeah, it sure is. Sheriff. I think we've said all there is to say, Sheriff. Oh, I don't believe we have said it all. I just got word from Carson City concerning the man who murdered your brother. Your brother's killer has been positively identified by the eyewitness from a sketch on the front page of the Virginia City Enterprise. They get our paper a few days late in Carson. Zach Crenshaw. That's right. The man Joe Cartwright shot in self-defense, the man who killed your brother. I don't believe it. No. Here's a telegram. You read it. I don't know what to say. Well, I'll tell you what to say. You make sure the word spread as fast as possible that you've canceled your offer, just in case somebody's thinking of trying for that thousand dollars. Then get over to the newspaper office and have some new posters printed up, admitting your mistake. Do you realize you came close to hiring somebody to kill an innocent man? Sheriff, I've already hired a man to kill Joe Cartwright. What? I already paid a man to kill Joe Cartwright. Who is he? What's his name? I don't know. I don't even know what he looks like. You listen to me, young lady. You get to making sense and quick. I, I I came in my room. It was dark, and he wouldn't let me see his face. He wanted half the money in, in advance, and I was so sure that Joe killed Millie that I gave it you to him. You were so sure. I better get out to the Ponderosa and warn the Cartwrights what's happening. I'm going to go with you. No, you're not going to go with me. I believe Joe Cartwright's had enough of you to last a lifetime. Well, you can't deny me the chance to prove that I was wrong to say that I'm sorry. All right, you can go, but we stop at the newspaper first. <laughs> You have no idea who it was that you hired. I've told you everything I know, Mr. Cartwright. I'd give anything if it hadn't happened, if I... Was there anything distinctive about, uh, about the man's voice, the way he talked, the way he walked, anything at all? His voice was muffled. Other than that, nothing. I'm so sorry. Well, you're grateful for trying to help us. I was so sure. I've been so foolish. Well, Clem, it sure doesn't give us very much to go on, does it? No. Nope. Could be almost anyone. It could be one of those two men Mr. Crenshaw and I booted off the ranch the other day. Yes, it could be. What's this you're talking about? Oh, two of the fellas like the one in the saloon looking for easy money. I'm inclined to think that well, the news gets around that the offer has been canceled. Whoever it was took the $500 is just going to get out of town and forget it. Well, I think so, too. The Enterprise is printing up those special posters right now. They'll put the story on page one. Two or three days should be all over. But that's two or three days. Joe, I wouldn't go near any strangers or any of the new hands until then. Don't worry, I don't intend to. Well, I better take Miss Roberts back to town and get to putting up those posters. I should stop at Crenshaw's on the way back. He'll have to know about his boy sooner or later. Hey, Clem? Why don't you let me take this wire over to Mr. Crenshaw, huh? Joe, I... I think you better stay close to the Ponderosa. Well, I'm not going to run into any strangers on the way out to Mr. Crenshaw's. 
I've been working with him the last few days. It's gonna hit him pretty hard. I think he might take a little better coming from me. How about it? Well, just as far as the Crenshaw Ranch and back, no more. Understood? Understood, don't worry. And you stop worrying. Everything's gonna be all right. If anything happens to you because of what I've done, I'll never forgive myself. Hey. Come on now. I just told you everything's gonna be all right. You go back to town, get some sleep. You feel better tomorrow. Put in enough hours here today? Yeah. Just want to come over and talk to you for a little while. Talk to me? Sure. Come on in. You want to talk to me, huh? Sure. Had your supper? No, sir, I, uh, I haven't, but I, I'm not hungry, thank you. Oh, nonsense. Grown boys always hungry. Come on, sit down. Good beef stew, hot and ready. Oh, really, it's very, it's very kind of you, but I'm not hungry. Come on, now, I mean it. We don't want that stew to get cold. There's plenty of time to talk uh, after you eat. I ain't the best cook in the world. Zack always liked my stool. Mr. Crenshaw, I... I came over here to talk to you about Zack. He was a handsome boy. Wild, free, spirited like a fine horse. But he, he was a good boy, wasn't he, Joe? Now, you uh, eat your stew while it's hot. Zack didn't like to let his stew get cold. Mr. Crenshaw, I have a, a wire from Carson City I think you should read. For me? The sheriff in Carson sent it to Clem and I. Asked him if I could bring it to you. Get this way. Told you the sheriff and Carson sent it to Clem. I knew what you said. Isn't enough that you murdered my son. Now you're making up stories to make him look like he was a killer like you. You don't fool me. Not for one minute. 
Mr. Crenshaw, I know this is hard for you, but I... I'm not the only one you don't fool. Linda Roberts, she knows what you are. She knows you murdered her brother just like you murdered my Zack. She gave me $500 to kill you. Ain't that I wanted the money. Just that I didn't want no one else doing it. All the time we've been digging that well, I've been planning on how to kill you. Mr. Crenshaw, you have to listen to me. Linda Roberts knows I did not kill her brother. She came to the ranch today and said she was sorry that she was wrong. She came out to the Ponderosa? I swear it. She's even printing a poster saying she knows she was wrong. Why would she give me $500 if she knew she was wrong? Because she didn't know the truth when she gave you the money. Please believe me. You ain't eating your stew, Joe. It's getting cold. Why don't, why don't you put down the gun and then I'll eat? Sure. You were, you were telling me about Miss Roberts. She knows she was wrong. That... That's what I was telling her. Wrong? I don't know, I remember. Yeah. Your stew's cold. I'll get you some more. Zach always liked my stew. fool Miss Roberts, but you can't fool me. That well we've been digging is going to be your grave. My father and the sheriff know I came out here to see you. That don't matter. They think I'm your friend. I saved your life. I was going to kill you that day. That's why I was following you. But I, I had to talk to Zach first. Then I got a better idea. I got $500 from Miss Roberts. Then I let you help me so those folks would think we were friends. That wire is a lie. Tell me it's a lie. I wish I could, Amos. Such a good boy. Such a good little boy. Help me. Oh, God, help me. I said I'm sorry so many times, but... But it's silly to say it again. You have a good trip and take care of yourself. I will. Mr. Cartwright. Bye-bye. Boss. Bye, ma'am. Hey! 
Yo, I think that little lady's gonna be all right. Yes, I think so too. Just hope Amos will be all right. Well, a man learns to face the truth. He he learns to live with himself. It's gonna be hard. Sure, you haven't bit off more than you can chew, Ben? No, George, I don't think I've bitten off more than I can chew. <laughs> hey, timber cutting's right on schedule. As a matter of fact, I'm a little ahead. Now, you see, it just doesn't make good business sense to haul that timber all the way to the sawmill and then haul it all the way back again. That's gonna cost a lot of money. Yes, it is. But don't forget that army contract includes a stiff penalty clause if I don't deliver on time. And that is a lot of money, and it's lost money. It just makes a whole lot better business sense to build a new mill, right where I'm cutting the timber. Well, I'll have to take it up with the other directors. And with a loan this size, we'll have to deal direct with the San Francisco Bank. All right, George, thanks. Please, do your best to speed things up. I need that machinery in two weeks. Yeah, I understand, Ben. At the stage. You know, it's the first time in months that stage been on time. <laughs> yeah, well, you better get out there. You don't want your cousin Clarissa waiting in that hot sun. No, I don't. Now, remember, Ben, you promised me I could meet her. You'll meet her. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Benjamin. I can see why you're happy here. This is one vast, peaceful sanctuary. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's your sanctuary while you're visiting here with us. Oh, I bet you can use the rest, huh? You've done a lot of traveling. The Franklins in Ohio, John and his family in Virginia, the Wilsons in Oregon. You make me sound like a wandering way. <laughs> hey, Cousin Clarissa! Welcome to the Ponderosa. You must be Joseph. Your father said in his letters that you were the impetuous one. Well, I just hope that's all he said. <laughs> hey, you two trying to keep her all to yourself? How to cousin Clarissa, huh? Your horse. <laughs> yes, sir. Hope you can stay a while. What is this, a calculated plot to acquire a housekeeper? No, no, no. You're going to be a welcome guest. <laughs> I won't be an idle guest. You wait and see. Come on, Ben. Show me the house. <laughs> Absolutely charming place. <laughs> but it could use a little redecorating. You know, I redecorated for the Lewises in Illinois. Oh. Oh, yes, 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 certainly. I remember. Where that. is it? Where is what? The kitchen. After all, a cook can't rest till she sees the kitchen. <laughs> well, oh, it... Benjamin, I'm gonna have such a wonderful time cooking for you. After all, most women have only one man to care for. Now I'll have three. Oh, welcome to Pandorosa, cousin Carissa. Oh. My name is Hop Singh, number one cook. Hop Singh is almost a member of the family. <laughs> Pretty soon I change name to Hop Singh Cartwright. <laughs> Everybody very happy you come here. See? It's not often we have lady from East to visit. Oh, you must be hungry from trip. Oh, don't go to any trouble, just something simple. Oh, no trouble. We have liver pate, dandelion soup, Malinated lamb, roast chicken, nice green salad, ready in one hour. Well. <laughs> now, you're probably a little tired. Would you like to rest before dinner? Well, I am just a little tired. Good. Uh, Joseph, would you show Clarissa to her room? Sure thing. This way. Oh, what a pity my stay can't be longer. You're welcome to stay with us as long as you like. Oh, we've got a ticket to Sacramento tomorrow. Oh, Joseph, what a lovely room. I'm glad you like it. All those horses. Reminds me of Cousin John's. They live in Virginia. I love Virginia. The people there are so genteel and civilized. 
I hope after all those fancy places, you don't, you don't find us a little too rough and ready for you. No. You have a lovely home, a cook, a family, kind of warmth and security that a casual visitor that blows in like a leaf on the wind can't change. Well, I'll, uh, I'll get some water for you for your bath, okay? Thank you, Joseph. You know, like dinner? Oh, it was very good, Hop Singh. I, I guess I was just too tired to be hungry. Uh. Hop Singh, the next time you make roast lamb, put some basil in it or rosemary. It, it makes it taste better. <laughs> oh, sure, Missy Kalisa. Brazil, a rosemary. You bet. Claire, Cousin Clarissa, you, uh, you eat like a hummingbird. <laughs> well, I guess I just don't believe in living to eat. Um, would you, uh, like a little more wine? No, no, thanks. It's very good for a domestic product. I bet you could get some French wine in San Francisco, hmm? Giorgio Russ's wine always tasted pretty good to me. <laughs> it's chilly in this altitude in the evenings. Excuse me, I'll get my shot. Oh, no, uh, Joseph, get it for sure. Oh, no, he wouldn't know where it is. Mm. I, uh, I must say I enjoyed the meal. I thought Hop Singh outdid himself. So did I, Paul, but I got a feeling that Teresa didn't enjoy it much. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, stick your foot off the table. Yeah. yeah, well, all them fancy Eastern relatives, I reckon she figures we're a little backwoodsy or something. I bet you Hop Singh's out in the kitchen now trying to figure out who Basil and Rosemary are. <laughs> I feel sorry for her, though. Kind of sad. Ever since her father died, she's been traveling around, visiting with one relative after another. Well, how come she never did stay no place permanent, Paul? Yeah, she was saying something about a uh, ticket to Sacramento. She got relatives from Sacramento? No, no. She told me about that when I picked her up in Virginia City and brought her in. She's going to settle down in uh, Sacramento. That place called Shady Rest. Now, I know what, what that is. It's where people go and they have no place of their own to live. She's kind of a young gal to be spending her life in a place like that, isn't she? Of course she is. She's too young to shut herself off in the world like that. Listen, maybe she ought to stay around here for a while. She might learn to like it. A lot of eligible bachelors in Virginia City. Uh, I thought maybe if it's all right with you two, we could talk to her. It'd be nice to have her around. Maybe she would stay for a while. It's fine with me. It's fine by me. I'll talk to her. Joseph? Hey, Clarissa, you're all dressed up. You going someplace? Yes, shopping. That is, if you'll hitch up the horse for me. I'll do you one better. I'll drive you in town myself. Oh, no need for that, Joseph. I'm very good with horses. Besides, I wouldn't dream of taking you away from your work. <laughs> okay, if that's what you want. I have to do everything myself. Where are that menu promised me? Clarissa, this is Harry Baker, our foreman. He ain't been with us so long, he thinks he owns the place. Well, if I did, I'd have me enough hired hands to finish building that sawmill. Hey, well, I hired the men yesterday, Harry, and they're going to be here this afternoon. Well, they better be. I ain't the boss's son. I can't sit on my hands the way you do. Sit on my hands? Well, you old coot, you haven't done a lick of work in 20 years. It hasn't been from the back of a horse. Well, you hold up your end, I'll hold up mine. 
Well, go get your hand held up. I gotta hitch up a buggy. Mr. Baker, just a minute, please. You're an employee here, Mr. Baker. If I ever hear you speaking to Joseph like that again, I shall have no choice but to tell Mr. Cartwright to have you discharged. Well, I see there's a new boss of the Ponderosa. Ma'am? That will be all, Mr. Baker. Teresa, I thought you'd be halfway to Virginia City by now. I would have been if I hadn't run into your foreman. Baker? What did he do? He was yelling at Joseph out there. As the older son, you should have been there to cope with him. Baker don't need no coping with. He yells at us, we yell at him. I just yell a little louder, he yells faster, that's all. That's just my point. A hired man should not yell at a Cartwright. May I help you, ma'am? Would you tell the manager that Miss Clarissa Cartwright is here? Yes. Oh, Miss Cartwright. Well, this is a great pleasure. I'm George Bristol. Ben told me you were going to visit for a few days. Benjamin has asked me to stay on indefinitely. Well, that's great news. I hope we see a lot of you. Would you please come into my office? Oh, thank you. Uh, Miss Cartwright, will you have a seat, please? Well, thank you. Ben has told me quite a lot about you. Oh? But after we've met, I realize he hasn't told me half enough. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Bristol. Now, Miss Cartwright, what can I do for you? I came in to open my account. I feel that a depositor should have complete faith in his bank, don't you, Mr. Oh, Bristol? you certainly should. Therefore, I don't believe I'll put all my funds in at once. Rather, I'd like to make a token deposit of $30. All right. Here's your deposit slip. And if you'll just sign this card. Your money is quite safe, Miss Cartwright. As you know, we handle Ben's account. <laughs> oh, incidentally, would you mind telling him that I have heard from San Francisco and there will be a short delay in our transaction? I'll give him that message. I'm very surprised Benjamin isn't doing business directly with San Francisco. Well, I've always handled Ben's account. Benjamin is such a kind man. Yes. I'm sure he tries to do business with the local people as much as possible. <laughs> good day, Mr. Bristol. It's a good day. Good afternoon, ma'am. What can I do for you? Uh, I'm Clarissa Cartwright. Are you the proprietor? Oh, I sure am. Proprietor, owner, clerk, all rolled up in one. In that case, you may help me. Oh, I'd be glad to. Clarissa Cartwright, huh? You must be Ben's cousin from back east. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. I'm looking for some curtain material. These are very nice, but they're not exactly what I'm looking for. Well, you may order anything you like, oh. right from San Francisco. Here are the samples. Well, uh, while I'm looking at these, have you any slippers? Yeah, uh, what is your size, ma'am? Oh, they're not for me. Gentlemen's slippers. Yes, ma'am. Howdy, George. You busy? Not for you, Roy. Come in, come in. I got it all ready for you before you even ask. Here's a campaign contribution from the Virginia City Bank. Oh, gee, thanks very much. Oh, don't thank me. It's a privilege to help you get reelected. Ben Cartwright has promised to run my election campaign for me again, same as usual. Well, is he going to have time entertaining his cousin and all? I heard that she's here. Uh, have you met her? Yes, I have. Uh -huh. Is she planning on uh, staying a while? Well, that's what I heard. Uh... uh I got a 
couple of posters here. I'd like to leave them with you. If you see your way clear, you could put them in the window. Thanks very much for this. <laughs> well, you sure know good merchandise, ma'am. With the curtain material you ordered, that comes to $268. Well, you just put that on Mr. Cartwright's account, will you? Were you sure this will be all right with Ben? Well, I told you I'm a Cartwright, didn't I? Yes, ma'am. I'll just wrap these things up I'll Put for this you. with it. Uh, don't forget the French Burgundy I ordered, will you? You bet. I'll remember. Howdy, sir. Oh, hi, Roy. Oh, Miss Cartwright, this is Roy Coffey, the sheriff of Virginia City. This is Ben's cousin. Howdy, ma'am. I heard you was paying us a visit. It certainly is a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. I'll pick those up in about an hour. Hope to see a lot of you. Uh, I doubt if I'll have any dealings with the law, Constable. Good afternoon, gentlemen. What was that she called you? Constable. That means sheriff in the East, I guess. Well, different places, different ways. <laughs> she sure is a fine lady. Ordered real French wine. Biggest order I've had in months. Hey, this is my lucky day. Now you'll be able to make a nice contribution to Roy Coffey's election campaign. I'll leave a couple of these posters here. You can put them in the window if you're minded. Thank you, sir. Supper lady, half hour, cousin Carissa. Oh, Hop Singh, I am not your cousin. Oh, sorry. Hop Singh, all time forget. I bought some new pots and pans. Those old ones should have been thrown away a long time ago. <coughs> it's Hop Singh's job to buy everything for kitchen. Nobody uh, else touch kitchen. You have more than enough to do, Hop Singh. I'm glad to be of help. Fly pan is too small. Mr. Horse eat more egg than I can cook in this all by himself. Perhaps Hoss eats too much. Dinner in 45 minutes, Hop Singh. Supper in half hour. Same time as usual. <laughs> oh, your boots, Hoss. Yes, and what about them? They're dirty. Yes, and they, they generally get that way working around the ranch all the time. Yes, that's why I bought the house slippers for you to put on when you come indoors. I've had Hopsing on his hands and knees all day, washing and waxing and polishing these floors. Yeah, it looks real nice. Much too nice for muddy boots. Yeah. Remove your boots, Hoss, please. Please. Just hold it right where you are, Joseph. Your boots. Yeah, my boots. What about them? They're dusty. They're dusty. They generally do get dusty when you work around the Joseph, ranch. Joseph, they're entirely too dusty to walk on this floor. Look at it. Hop Singh's been in there on his hands and knees, scrubbing, waxing, polishing all day. What are you going to do? Carry me upstairs? Slippers, Joseph. They're yours. Slippers. Cousin Clarissa. That's right. Next thing you know, she's gonna have us wearing ties to the dinner table. Not me, she ain't. Slippers. Tell me how nice the room looks. <laughs> I, uh, I reckon this is what Paul meant by a woman's touch, huh? It is. The room certainly needed it. i 
kind of busy, Clarissa. Well, if it makes you happy, it's been a labor of love. Now we'll get this extra mail. Let's see if we can speed things up a little bit, huh? Yeah. First, like to ride into Virginia City or over to the next ranch and get some breakfast. Breakfast? You just had three portions. Yeah. Porridge. Oh, I ain't had porridge since I was a kid. Whatever happened to steak and eggs, anyhow? Well, Clarissa's just trying to bury the menu. Well, good, but she's starving me to death while she's doing it. Dum, doom, bum, bum, dum, bum, bum, bum. Hopsy? Yes, cousin. Missy Cartwright. I found this absolutely beautiful. Sterling silver tea service in the back room. Seems like such a shame to hide it. Everybody here drink coffee. Nobody drink tea, so I leave in back room. Well, I drink tea, and at the traditional half past three. Sure. I fix tea. Now, you be sure the water's boiling, and don't fail to preheat the pot and let it steep. You have some small cookies? Got plenty cookie left over from Little Joe birthday party. Marvelous! Oh, howdy, Miss Cartwright. Is, uh, is Ben around? Benjamin and the boys have been out all day long. Well, is there anything I can do for you? Well, no, I don't think so. I, uh, I told Ben that I'd bring some of these election posters by. He always handles my election campaign, you know. No, I didn't know that. Uh -huh. oh, won't you come in and have some tea? Well, thank you. Say, those flowers are beautiful, aren't they? You sure have fixed this place up? I'm seeing. Sit down, would you? Thank you, ma'am. Constable Coffee will have some tea. Coffee will have tea. <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> Re-elect Roy Coffee for sheriff. <laughs> That's not a very good likeness, is it? Well, most of the folks know me. Uh, they'll recognize it. <laughs> tea lie on time. Half past three. I do think tea is so civilized, don't you? Cream or sugar? Well, I don't know. I, I don't drink much tea. Oh, see, Hop Singh hasn't brought the lemon. Oh, the domestic help out in the West is deplorable, don't you think? Miss, I just want to... Don't want to cause you no bother. Uh, I am in a bit of a hurry, and if it's all the same with you, I'll, I'll just be running along. And you will tell Ben that I left the posters, please? Well, surely you don't expect Benjamin to tack up these posters, do you? Well, I wouldn't be too sure about that, generally. I can understand him getting deeply involved in state or national politics, but not on a local level. But when we talked about it the last time, he said distinctly that he wanted to handle my election campaign. Oh, I'm sure he would, if he could spare the time. But he said... I'll tell you. I'll talk to him when he returns. Hmm? You know, sometimes I think Benjamin is much too generous with his time. Maybe I'd better just hang on to these posters until after you've had a chance to discuss the matter with Benjamin. I think that would be an excellent idea. Goodbye, miss. Goodbye. Thank you, Jay. an hour earlier. You missed Constable Coffee. Oh. Oh, you mean Sheriff Coffee. Yes. I'm sorry, I missed him. I, uh... Oh, did he leave anything for me? No. I offered him some tea and we discussed his campaign for re-election. Mm. He seems like a very nice man. 
Oh, this is uh, Roy's one of the best. Uh, sorry, Mister. Something troubling you? Well, as a matter of fact, yes. That lumber contract with the army. I can't fulfill it until I get the new machinery. I can't get the machinery until the loan comes through. It hasn't come through, and time is running out on me. I just have to go in and see George Bristol again. Would you like to ride in with me tomorrow morning? Yes, and I can do some more shopping. That is, unless you think I've run up too many bills. Everything looks lovely. Yeah. We'll ride in right after breakfast. All right. Uh, Clarissa. Uh, you finish your shopping and then we'll meet you at the hotel for lunch. I like that very much. See you later, Joe. Yeah, see you later, Pop. Hey, Norm. Hi, Ben. I'm expecting a wire from Sacramento. Will you look to see if one came in? I think one came in last night for you, Ben. I'll take a look for it right now. Good. I simply had to come and see you, Mr. Bristol. Benjamin tells me he's deeply concerned about the delay, and so am I. Well, I'm doing my best. Well, it's just not enough. Benjamin is losing valuable time by dealing with such a small local bank. Are you suggesting that he could do better without me? Oh, Mr. Bristol, Benjamin is dealing with you because you're such an old friend. But I think you'll agree he's paying a great price for that friendship. Friendship? Oh, Clarissa. Well, I uh, didn't, uh, didn't know you were here. I thought you were out shopping. Well, I had a little business with Mr. Bristol, but I'll just be leaving. Oh, uh, no, 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 don't move. I'll, I'll just be a moment. Uh, George? Good morning, Ben. Uh, I just got a wire from Sacramento. They have the mill machinery ready to ship, and I was wondering what you'd heard from San Francisco. George? <laughs> George, I said, what did you hear from San Francisco? The loan has not been approved yet. I told you it would take time, and after all, this is only a small-town bank. George, look, you know about my army contract, the, the stiff penalty clauses, and, and, and the cancellation clause. I can't wait much longer. I understand your problem. However, perhaps it would be better if you handled it yourself. Uh, Clarissa, perhaps it might be better if you uh, finish your shopping now, and I'll meet you back at the hotel. I want to talk to George uh, uh, that won't be necessary. There's nothing more to be said. Uh, George, I, I don't know why you've got your back up like this. If you don't mind, I have work to do. I just don't understand that. George, sometimes I get so danged uppity, can't even reason with him, get my own loan. Oh, I'll just finish my shopping. Oh, Roy. Yes, sir. Ben, hi. Roy, and Clarissa told me you came by yesterday. I thought you were going to leave some of those posters for me. What, with the mill you're building, I figured that uh, you'd be much too busy to get mixed up in local politics. Well, I don't even know if I'm going to be building a mill, but I've been running your campaigns before. Don't you want me to run this one? Thanks, just the same, but I just couldn't take your valuable time. Well, my time's valuable, too. Ah, uh, what can I do to help? Roy? What's the matter with you? You know, you're, you're as... You're as grumpy as a grizzly with a sore paw. 
I told you I was going to run your campaign. I'm going to. Well, I thought you were all tied up with the mill. Well, I am tied up with the mill. But I built mills before, and I'll build them again. That doesn't mean I'm so tied up I can't help you. Ben's right. Yeah, I guess he is. A little plain talk usually straightens things out. Pity more people don't know that. <laughs> Son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what are you fellas doing here? I thought you were working up the North Range. Well, you thought wrong, Mr. Cartwright. Me and the boys decided to come into town and have ourselves a drink. Oh, really? Hey, well, that's fine with me, but if Pa finds out about it, you're liable to find yourself without a job. Mm, well, he's going to be a mite late. Because in case you didn't hear, we quit. Hey, wait a minute. What do you mean you quit? Quit! When some female comes into the men's bunkhouse, hangs up curtains, pours out all our whiskey, and then starts ordering my men around, I am through. Through. Yeah, Roy Coffee was no problem. I just talked to him and straightened things out with him. And Baker, well, you know, any times he's blown up and quit, I can, I can talk to him, but... Mr. George Bristol, well, that's a horse of another color. He just froze up completely. Did you ask him why? When Mr. George Bristol freezes up, he's harder to get to than the gold in the Denver Mint. Well, how come it turn against you all of a sudden, Bull? It must have been Clarissa. She was sitting in the office when I walked in. She sure has the knack of saying the wrong thing at the right time. She sure does. She sure gets under my skin. Hop Singh ain't been the same, neither. No, oh, she, she doesn't do it deliberately. She just does it. Well, Paul, in that case, how come the relatives keep asking her to come and stay with them all the time? Because they need her. They use her. Anytime they need somebody to take care of the baby, take care of the house, do the house cleaning, the cooking, and there's no help in the house, they send for good old Clarissa, and she goes. Because she has to. The only way she can pay for her keep has nothing but her pride. <laughs> Took care of her father long enough until the day he died and left her with nothing and an old maid. How do you think the relatives are really using Clarissa? What's that supposed to mean? I just like when she came here. We didn't ask her to be the maid, the housekeeper, the cook. That was all her idea. Maybe she's done exactly the same thing with the rest of the relatives. That's right. Well, may have something there. Well, she just likes to keep busy. <laughs> I'll tell her to stop running her lives. When? Hmm? When will you talk to her? Soon I'll talk to her tomorrow. How about now? Still early. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Yes? It's Ben, Clarissa. May I come in? Of course, Benjamin. You know, I've been lying here thinking about this house. Everybody's so good to me. The warmth, Benjamin. The love. I envy you the way you love each other. Well, we... we manage to stick together. We always have. I can see it, I know. Three against the world. Oh, well, no, 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 not, 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 not exactly. Uh, uh, Clarissa, it's, it's not, uh, not three against the world. It's... You see, we have many good friends and neighbors and, and people who help us along the way all the time. And uh, uh, it's really what I... Um, Wanted to discuss, uh, wanted to talk to you about. Yes, Benjamin. I, I know that you have, uh, you've traveled a, a great deal, met many people, but I'll bet you that people out here are much more sensitive than the people in the East. Now, I know they look hard and, and the, their hands are all gnarled from, from hard work, but their, their feelings are, are very close to the surface. They're very easily 
hurt. Are you scolding me? Oh, no, no, of course not. It's, it's not for... I, I was really just wondering whether whether you had said anything to uh, uh, George Bristol that, that uh, well, that he might have misunderstood. Oh, Benjamin, you worry about the most unimportant things. Well, he's just the local banker, and besides, you yourself said he had a closed mind now, didn't you? Well, uh, yes, yes, I, I, I did, uh, but, but uh, now, <clears throat> my, my foreman, uh, Harry, and, and, and the, the, the two hands had just walked off with him. Oh, three. That's not such a loss. You see, these, these people, they, uh, they don't understand that... Uh... Are you trying to tell me that I've worn out my welcome? No, Clarissa, we, we all want you to be very happy here. Oh, I am happy. Everything's absolutely marvelous. Good. But you can't expect me to just sit around like a piece of furniture and not have an opinion. Well, well, of course not, Clarissa. No one would ever expect that. You can't be denied that. But I've offended your friends. It, oh, it, Benjamin, it, it, if it, I'm it, coming between you and your friends, then I shall simply have to leave here. Oh, wait a minute, Clarissa. No, no, please, Clarissa. No, I, I didn't come in here for any reason like that. No, you, you, I had no intention of even suggesting such a thing. Well, if I stay, I've got to be useful. Well, of course you do, Clarissa. A woman needs to be needed, Benjamin. Certainly. That's the most important thing in her life. Oh, Clarissa, of course it is. Of course it is. Now, Clarissa, you, you must promise me something. Now, you, you must put out of your mind any thought of leaving here. Now, you, you must do that now. Yes, I will, Benjamin. Thank I'm you. Sorry. Thank you. Now, I, I know you, you, you must be tired. And, well, I'll, uh, I'll leave you and we'll, we'll see you in the morning. Yes. Good night. Good night. Make up. Uh, well, she uh, she wanted to leave. Whew. Is she going to? Uh, no. Um, I, I talked her out of it. Right, you haven't met my wife, Elvira. How do you do? My, you must be happy to be settled down after all your wanderings. Did Benjamin tell you I was a gypsy? No. It was Emily Durker. Emily Durker? She works in the post office. She mentioned how your letters to Ben always had a lot of different return addresses. Well, I have a very large family, Mrs. Peterson, and I love them very dearly. Well, come along, Elvira. Well, let's have a sample hop sings punch. What say? Some punch, Sherry. Thank you, ma'am. Well, what's going on here? Well, are you always having a campaign party or something? We'll soon find out. They get the horses. What? Anything. Benjamin, surprise, surprise. Are you surprised? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I am just a little surprised. Now, what is all this about? Well, last night you said I'd made trouble with your friends, and I didn't want that. So I went into town and I talked to them, and now they're all here. All your friends are here. Well, are you pleased? Well, uh, yes, Clarice, I'm, uh, it's, it's, it's very nice. <laughs> it was very nice of you, Clarice. I, uh, everything looks lovely. <laughs> I uh, better get cleaned up. Good evening, Miss Cartwright. Good evening, Mr. Bristol. Oh, joy. <laughs> well, nice to see you here. Uh, thank you. However, I'm here because Miss Cartwright extended a personal invitation. Oh, well, uh, no matter what the reason, I'm still very happy that you're here, George. 
<laughs> Why don't you get Mr. Bristol some punch, Benjamin? Uh, yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, George, come along. Get some no, 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 you get it. Uh, I'll be right back. Oh, uh, cookies are good. Won't see a case. Clarissa's idea for patching things up. I gotta get this punch to George. Oh, what's the big hurry? I don't want Clarissa to have a chance to say anything more to him. Oh, stop worrying. You got nothing to lose. Most of these people don't talk to you anymore anyway. Oh, Ben. Hey, that Pete Jenkins is running against me. He could get an awful lot more votes than we first figured. Uh, what would you say, Ron? Well, Pete Jenkins is going around the county and making speeches and uh, talking to folks. And from what I've been hearing, it's a very nice party, Miss Cartwright. But I'm wondering why you invited me. Well, I was hoping you'd make it up with Benjamin. Make it up? A man has to be generous, don't you think? So I thought maybe you could set up some meetings, like here in Virginia City at the town hall and some other towns in the county. My cousin Benjamin's been very good to you. Mm? Yes, that's quite true. And I know you're grateful to be of service to him. Grateful to be of service? There. I knew you weren't too proud to recognize the obvious. I thank you for setting me straight, Miss Cartwright. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about that first thing in the morning, Roy. All right, uh, fine. Excuse me. Uh, to George? <laughs> well, here's, here's that punch. <laughs> Not now, Ben. I'm going home. Uh, George, wait a minute now. We ain't going home. The party just started. Well, it's over as far as I'm concerned. Boy, Ooh, have some more punch. I'm going in to get cleaned up. Oh, hey, Harry. Harry. I'm glad you could make it. I want my money. Hey, now, come on. Come on. I forget that money talk. You've been with us too long for that. I ain't working for no female. All right. You don't have to work for any female. We got that all straightened out. You can take the curtains down in the bunkhouse, and you can even keep a little whiskey in there if you want to. How's that sound? <laughs> Fine. All right, then forget about it. Go on, get some punch. Howdy, ma'am. I thought I told you no drinking for the help of the Ponderosa. Hey, Harry, where are you going? What about that punch? <laughs> hey, Harry, what the heck's this all about? Harry, what the? Harry, we get. Look, I'm, I'm sorry about that, Harry. I didn't want to hit you. Joseph, what's going on here? Beats the heck out of me, Pa. Harry, you better get on back to town and sober up. Sober up? Heck, I can't even get a drink of punch around here. I want my money. If it's all right with that female who's running the Ponderosa. Joe, get him his money. No, please. Don't go. Please, everyone, stay. Oh, I didn't want to cause any trouble. I just wanted to help. Ben, they're your friends. That's the most precious thing in the world. And I came between you. Please. Clarissa, it, it, it's all right. It, no. No, it's not all right. It's not all right until you're, you're friends again. Then it will be all right. Well, I've always been a doggone hothead, Mr. Cartwright. You know that. You've always been a good foreman, Harry. Joe, what are we fighting about anyway? Uh, I can't remember, Harry. And I'm sorry, Ben. I think that I could have been more tolerant. Well, Hop Singh has made some cookies. I'll, I'll get them. George. You know, fellas, I think we could uh, stand some punch. <laughs> Mr. Carlyle, I'm leaving. I'm going back to San Francisco. No, 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 Son of a gun. She done it again. <laughs> I'll go get him, Pa. You know, Ben, I think I'm beginning to understand that lady. Really? 
Yes. Really? George, would I like to talk to you about something? Beautiful room. It's so generous of you to give it to oh, me. Oh, you like it, I'm glad. Oh, like it. I just love it. Oh, good, good. <laughs> but Benjamin. Oh, now, Clarissa, come on now. You gotta stop worrying. Now sit down. You're an excellent bookkeeper. You know that. You'll have your own office. It'll be peaceful and quiet to be able to do all the work you want. Nobody will disturb you. Oh, I do appreciate what you're doing. But hold on there. It's all settled. I've already talked to George Bristol. He's delighted at the prospect. He is? Clarissa. George Bristol needs your help. He... He really needs me? Of course he does. Oh. You know, George Bristol is a very nice man, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's, uh... He's one of the best. It would be nice to be independent, wouldn't it? Now, wait a minute, Clarissa. You're not gonna get so danged independent you're not gonna come out to visit with us. Oh. Thank you, Benjamin. But it'll have to be just for a visit. I'm going to be very busy. Good. Well, I better be getting along. We'll see you soon. Yes, Benjamin, at the bank. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm beginning to have all kinds of new ideas about banking. I can't wait to tell George about them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>